I'm Rick Buck and I've been a dentist for 16 years. Today we're going to discuss the steps involved in a class one dental composite filling, which is a common procedure used to restore decayed or damaged teeth on just the biting surface of the tooth. So let's get started. After the patient is numb, we start with the filling preparation, which is a fancy way of saying we are going to drill a slot in your tooth. Now the dentist will use a high speed drill to do this initial drilling and remove the decayed or damaged part of the tooth to what they think would be an optimal filling. The optimal parameters for each dentist may be different, but typically include at least removing all the stained grooves around the cavity on the biting surface of the tooth. And you want to make it deep enough, which is at least one and a half millimeters so that the filling will be thick and not break in time. And after I do all of that, you can see the uncovered dental decay. It has more of a brown or in some cases orange appearance than the vibrant yellow healthy portion which is called dentin and is the layer of tooth under the enamel. The dentist will carefully shape and clean the slot or prep to ensure optimal bonding of the dental composite material that we'll get into in just a minute. Now sometimes if the filling is small, drilling these optimal parameters will remove all of the decay as well. However, if drilling to the optimal parameters doesn't remove remove all the decay as it doesn't here, then we remove the decay with a slow speed drill. The slow speed drill with a round burr or drill bit, if you will, is good at removing decayed tooth structure without removing a lot of healthy tooth in the process. In contrast, a high speed drill will just remove pretty much anything it comes in contact with. You will notice you are done drilling out the decayed tooth structure because decay comes out as a mush or in these flakes when it's unhealthy. Healthy tooth structure will come out as this dusty appearance with a slow speed round burr. Now, as I've removed the whole decay spot in the middle, you will see it now looks like a healthy yellow dentin layer again, unlike some of the other decayed spots on the same tooth that we haven't gotten to yet. Now, since I've showed you that, I'm going to also remove all the other dark decayed spots on this tooth in the same manner that I just did. I go over those spots many times, making sure that there is no darkness left behind. Once the decay is all out, I will use the high speed drill again at the very end to smooth out the walls of this filling preparation in any spot that seems to be heavily undercut, meaning that I have drilled away the underlying tooth directly under the tooth that is left behind, creating this kind of shelf. And doing that removes these weakened spots that would possibly fracture in time if you didn't smooth them out. Once I feel like all the decay is removed, I use my explorer to ensure the remaining tooth is as hard as a rock. And that's how Denton should feel with this metal pointy explorer of mine. You can also hear how solid the tooth is when I do this with my explorer. Now that the remaining dentin is hard and healthy and yellow without discoloration, we can move on to filling the tooth up. Next is a step I do on almost every filling that most dentists only do on deep fillings. I apply this first layer, which is a filling liner called GC liner. It strengthens the underlying tooth with fluoride and helps a lot to avoid possible sensitivity. It starts as a liquid, but we light cure the liner and then it hardens into place. After the liner is in place, we etch the surface of the dentin and the liner, which will strengthen the bond of the final filling that we are about to get into. Now, this etchant has a downside. It can possibly make the tooth sensitive, which is one reason I apply the GC liner first. If you put the liner on first, it stops the etchant from causing sensitivity in vulnerable areas of the filling. We then rinse out the etchant after a few seconds. After the etchant is removed, we move on to now the bonding of the filling. Quickly, before I get into the most interesting part, I developed the best toothbrush floss and other dental products that are in Amazon affiliate links in the description. Most dental products have not progressed in the last 10 to 15 years and these dental products are more advanced and will give you a stunningly clean mouth. You should watch my videos about why they are the best 
posted at the end of this video so you brush and floss with superior results that avoid gum disease, cavities, and give you fresh breath. This specific bond that I'm using is very, very strong and called Peak Universal Bond. Bonding will attach the filling to the tooth. If you don't apply enough bonding agent, the filling can be sensitive and come out easily. I also like to scrub the bond into place, which has been shown to also significantly increase the bond strength. Now, after I've applied the bond liberally, we need to suction out the excess bond. And with that done, we set the bond in place with the light cube. Next, we move on to the filling itself. You will see me express out the composite into the tooth and shape it nicely with a hand instrument. We do this in layers to ensure the integrity of the filling to the tooth. You see, the resin composite will shrink one to 5% when we cure it with the light. If we don't do it in layers and we fill too much at once, when it sets, it can put stress on the tooth as it shrinks, or it can encourage separation and the final filling filling will have leaking between it and the tooth because of the shrinkage. Starting with the liner as we did acts as the first level of filling, which is another reason I do it on almost all my fillings. On the final layer, I try and shape the resin composite filling to look like the actual tooth. And we do the final set of the filling with the light, which we cure much longer than some of the preliminary. Layers. We then use the finishing burrs on the high speed hand piece to smooth out the filling and get the height of the filling just right. To do this, we will use blue biting paper that will reveal where the teeth bite against each other. So if it is off, you will know exactly where it's off by the blue markings left by the paper. Now, I rarely ever have sensitivity after I do my fillings. And a lot of why I'm doing these steps is more fully explained in my video about how to avoid sensitivity sensitivity after a filling because there are many ways a filling can cause sensitivity and if you're not careful and if you skip steps I explain how this happens and how a dentist can avoid those. Once the tooth feels and looks even to the bite we polish it with the slow speed drill to eliminate the gritty feeling that comes from using the finishing burrs and that is how we get one nice class one composite resin filling. Watch all my daily tooth care videos I have posted now for the best technique, tips, and products for a stunningly clean mouth that avoids tooth decay and gum disease and gives you fresh breath and white teeth. My dental products are in Amazon affiliate links in the description below this video. If in Southern California, my dental office is in the description as well. Like and subscribe to my channel if you have teeth.